Hello everyone, QDIK here. Happy New Year! Hope you are having a great time for the holiday, and wish you all the best in the coming 2024. You know what the cool kids say nowadays? New Year, new timer. So here we come. I'm so excited to share with you the all-new FPV Sim Timer 3.0. There are so many things I want to tell you, but for the length of this video, I'm just gonna cherry pick a few. Let's get into it. The first feature I want to show you is the Risk History feature. Make sure that you never miss a lap in an event. We're gonna do a real fly. I'm gonna show you the feature afterwards. All right, this is the timer I'm gonna use for testing today. It only has one node in there for my personal practice, uh, but we're just gonna use it for to simulate multiple racer events. I'm gonna put it uh, underneath the flag where I'm gonna fly over from left to right. So I'm putting it within this box because the this box helps block signals from other directions. So when it flies above the flag, the, the peak is a lot stronger than when it's uh, flying nearby. Helps eliminate the false readings. If you're getting false readings, we recommend, highly recommend using a deep box like this. This box doesn't seem to be uh, metal. Seems like it's just wood, but it uh, still helps. We're just gonna start a race. The first thing you're gonna notice is we automatically show the uh, RSSI monitoring graph here. And then let's uh, start a race. All right, now I'm in the goggle. Let me actually first uh, reduce the throttle cap a little bit. It's a 5S, I don't wanna keep crashing during the video. <laughs> um, okay. Let's give it a try. So, remember the timer is divided here, right? Gonna fly over it. MCK1418, J1418, Hipper1418, Levi1418. MCK143, J143, Hipper143, right, like Levi1413. Looks like we are improving our time, but uh, for testing, I'm gonna finish. Uh, maybe finish here. See how much time we have. Okay, about four minutes. We're just gonna finish here. Race finished. So with the 3.0, once you're finished, you know you can notice that there's a new button here called View Race History. Let's uh, click in. It's gonna take a little bit of time to draw the whole uh, race history, but uh, with the race history, you can see a few parts. First one is the scroll bar. You can drag left and right to scroll through the history, and you can see an overview of of the history here. From the scroll bar, you can see that. The RSSI is mostly flat in the beginning because, well, I need a little bit of time to boot up the, the goggle. It's a modern goggle, right? And uh, later on, when we start flying, you can see that uh, the RSSI starts to fluctuate. And you can also see these vertical bars. These are where events is happening. Like, how, how do we define events here? Events are like, for example, when you start a race, when the quad passes a gate, those are called events. Here, like for all these four timers, they are all connected to the same node. So all the events here are aligned. In practice, when you have multiple racers flying, you will get events at different places. Well, the previous view is a little bit small, so I zoomed in a little bit. Here you can see that each pass is marked as an event, and you can also see the lap time here. So here we didn't miss any laps, but uh, let's say we missed a lap due to incorrect settings of the sensitivity, and the actual peak should be here. What do you do? You click on it, and you click mark, you can see that it draws a new uh, red line. And you move your cursor, you can see that here, it shows you the, this actually shows you the time uh, interval between these 
red line and your current cursor point. Let's say that uh, our new peak is here, still right? And we can see that the lap time is 1660. Once we're, we figure this out, we can go back to the, to the lap time and find the lap that we miscalculated 1752 for hyper. 1752. To edit that, you just click edit time and you can find the 1752. Let's uh, say the new time is 1660, right? You just uh, put in 1660. Once you're done, you click finish edit and you can find the new lap time 1660 uh, here. And once you finish reviewing all the lap times, you can click uh, submit race. In 3.0, when you go to stats, you can see it's also revamped. Now the table is first a lot cleaner. Uh, second, you can see this button trend analysis right uh, on the top bar. When you click on it, it will draw out the, the race time. We know that here all racers use the same timer as the same channel, so they they are the same time. And we know that we tweaked hybrid's time a little bit so that the blue line, which is hybrid, is a little different from other people. Awesome. By the way, here you can also collapse the trend and uh, print the timeout using the web interface. We're going to revisit the printing uh, feature a little bit more later to allow you to print on your local machine instead of going to the cloud and requires a network. Cool. Another feature I want to get into is the feature where we allow you to directly edit the peak uh, and detection sensitivity right within the graph. So here, uh, within the timer, click on the graph. You can see that there's three menus here, right? Set peak allows you to set the peak uh, manually. The value will be the value that it shows here, which is your, where your cursor uh, was put when you open this menu. If you click on set, set peak, the peak will be set and everything will be adjusted. Here we are connecting to the same timer, so you can see all the values are reflected. But uh, if you are connecting to individual timers, they will be updated individually. And you can also set enter sensitivity here. You can see that the purple line moves correspondingly. And similarly for leaf sensitivity. This allows you to you know, adjust your RSSI detection uh, parameters a lot quicker. The next feature I'm going to show you is the bulk racer management feature, which will be super helpful when you are organizing a big event. If you go to Racers tab, now you can see that we have some extra buttons here. The first one is Upload Racer. Now you can upload racers from a CSV file. If you're not sure about the format, just download the template CSV and then edit that directly. Once you're done, click on Upload Racer. Click on the edited CSV file. And it's going to show you that this will add 51 new racers. Proceed. I'm going to click OK. And now you can see all the racers I added in the CSV file uh, is imported here. Now you may ask, how do we organize these into groups? Well, introducing the new auto group feature, you can specify the group size. For example, here we got four timers. So I'm just going to group all the racers into four. And I'm going to click on auto group. And this is going to tell me I'm going to add 14 new groups. Proceed. I'm going to click OK. And now you can see all the groups are added here. If you don't like all the groups and want to uh, redo them, you can also clear all the groups and clear all the racers from the drop down here. There's another big feature, timing server feature, which I don't have enough time to go deep into today. But this allows you to overlay time info onto OBS software and also connect another timer uh, app to this timer app as a client, and this timer app will act as a server. We'll get into more details in a later video. There are a lot of other exciting features in 3.0. Feel free to explore yourself or read through the change logs. And don't hesitate to join our Discord or reach out if you have any questions. Again, Happy New Year. Thank you all for the great support in 2023, and I wish you the best in 2024. I'm QDRK. Let's send it in the new year.